perfect if you want people coming back. What the f I got rats running under my feet right now. Oh my god, how many rats are here? And the bar is crowded with customers right now. What's up guys? It's your boy Alan again, back with another video. And today we're gonna watch another episode of Bar Rescue. But before we start, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And uh, let's go check this out. Two Cans Oceanside Bar was opened 10 years ago by two partners, Jamie and John. They hate each other. They won't even work the same shift. So they work opposite days. They want nothing. Are you kidding me? You have a place that's been open for 10 years and the owners hate each other's? Why did they even decide to open this place together then? Especially when you're owning a bar with somebody else, you have to really trust each other's. So look at this. This boardwalk has eight to 9,000 people a day walking by. Look at the tourists and the locals everywhere. Look at how beautiful it is. Gorgeous. How is this place failing? It's such a good location. I mean, we already know that the owners hate each other, so maybe that has to do with it. There it is. Two cans, Oceanside Bar and Grill. Look at the asset that this is. It's on a corner on the boardwalk. This is a really good location. What's going on here? Why are the owners fighting each other? Especially after 10 years, you think that they'll eventually figure out how to get along. Look at the bar over there. It's a Latin concept. Feel the energy? Yeah, good energy. It's exciting. It's drawing people in. And look at this place. Dead, go down. <laughs> so I guess that's the explanation is that there's competition around this beach. Of course everyone's gonna go to the other one. There's more people, there's more lively. Those places probably also don't have owners that hate each other's. What a waste of a location. All they have to do is just get along just to make this place work. Look at this place. We have 50s diners tables with Irish bar chairs. <sighs> this looks horrible. This doesn't look like a bar. And the tables don't even match the chairs. Did they just buy everything off of a garage sale? Do you have any specialty cocktails? The caparina, the margaritas, and mojitos. Okay, so we'll have each of those. We'll also do your Bloody Mary. Okay. You got a pad? No. Why aren't you writing this down? That's a huge drink order. How are you gonna remember this? I mean, yeah, it's slow, but you should still be writing things down. Any random conversation or interruption and all those memorized items can go out the window. I mean, we're ordering an awful lot of stuff. You're setting yourself up to be embarrassed 10 minutes from now. Go get a pad. Okay. It'd be helpful if you had it in your pocket when you got here. I'm a bartender. So she says I'm a bartender. So it doesn't matter. You're still taking food orders. I have a pad and I bartend. Especially when you're busy and you have to deal with multiple guests. Like, you gotta write things down. Otherwise, you're gonna make mistakes. Do we have pads? Oh. They don't even have pads? They're not even set up for success. How expensive are notepads? I also want to have a pina colada, a Tom Collins, a tequila sunrise, a Mai Tai, a planter's punch, and a zombie. I've never heard of a zombie. Zombie, you're by the beach? You've never heard of a zombie? I know that a lot of people make it wrong, not following the classic recipe, but how do you never even heard of it? I don't know what the f to do. I don't know what to do right now. He wants one of everything on the menu. Sarah, will you make me a Mai Tai and a zombie punch? I don't zombie punch you mean planters punch zombie that's just a name by itself these things are breaking apart like crap <sighs> why do you have oysters if your staff doesn't even know how to shut them they're not cheap okay this is the pina colada this is tequila sunrise this is the zombie but we don't have papaya juice there's no papaya juice in the zombie just so you know no <laughs> Yeah, there's no papaya juice. Did they just Google some random recipe on the internet and got the wrong one? The other one was doing the <laughs> filling and then we were rotating. And then that played havoc on our health and our bodies. And uh, two years into it, the wives said, see you later, bye. The wives? They both got divorced from this? Holy crap. I'm sure they bought this bar as an investment for their family. But when it destroys your family, that's... <laughs> two of them, both of them. They got, their family got destroyed from this. That's when you've got to think about, you know, instead of being here so long, maybe you should hire some help. How do you like these? I love the barbecue sauce. Barbecued oysters. Not very appetizing. Barbecued oysters? You're gonna destroy the subtle flavors of the oysters with barbecue sauce. Happy hour oysters, yes, that you can do whatever you want with them, but not these like nicer varieties of oysters. So these are all my friends coming in. Oh, I need menus. 
ridiculous. How many? The bottom. Oh my god. Yeah, why you even have such a big place if you're not prepared to handle this? Also, you have two owners right now. They should be greeting the guests, passing out menus, but they're just standing there like deer in headlights. I'm gonna walk around and keep an eye in the front of the house. Okay, sounds good. Sir, I haven't sent out one order on the computer. Me neither. We're just gonna have to go with it. Dude, you gotta ring stuff in. Otherwise, you're just making drinks for free. How are you gonna remember all these? Like, you're gonna enter them way too late, get orders mixed up. Hey, man, how are you? What's up? I'm here with John Tapp. Right. How's it going? How's it look like it's going? Like, I'm one person. Right. You only have one person in the kitchen? This is crazy. Are they always understaffed like this? Fruit flies. <laughs> You're by the beach. You gotta be extra careful on not having insects and pests. Would you drink that? Never. Did she just offer everyone free shots? She gave away two. Oh my god, this is. <laughs> They're not bringing anything in. And she just gave away two bottles of Patron for free to the customers. Why? Like, why is she doing this? The owner's right there. They're okay with this? I don't even know who said what. Now she's not giving away drinks. She's giving away whole bottles of spirit. She isn't collecting any money. Oh my god. They're. <laughs> Nobody's paying right now. Is this how this place is normally run? Look at all the grease from the fryer. That's just sitting on the floor right here. That's how is it? Is the fryer leaking? Like, how does this happen? Dangerous. What the f you want me to do? You got a shrimp on the floor. You got a rat trap over here. You have a exposed rat trap where someone just could step on that. Why is there so much crap on the floor? Not only do you have to worry about getting your foot snapped with the mouse trap, you might slip on some frozen shrimp or the grease. You paid enough for the What's the guy going? And now you have a, the only cook just walked out of his shift. Quit. What? He just quit, he just left. This place is a hole. I just gotta share with you. I mean, look at this. Dude, look at that. that I, that's literally in the middle of the walking area. Like, anyone could have stepped on any of those. <laughs> the frozen ship or the rat trap. All this stuff sitting out of room temperature like this. I'm glad I didn't get the ribs. I mean... Why is... Oh my god. It's not just the floor that's a hazard, but the food is not being stored properly. These are also health hazards for the customers as well. This is what I get. You have got to kidding me. How did no one see this until now? It's not even that hard to check. Look at how much mold there is. It's right next to the beer draft handles. <laughs> you got rat traps on the floor, frozen shrimp on the floor. So it's a hazard for the people working here. The food is not properly stored safely. And now even the bar itself has health violations. This place is not safe, no matter where you are. We couldn't keep up. It was too much. Either customers were going to be served or tabs were going to be made. And we lost a lot of money. Is that all? Can I just want you gave away two bottles of Patron for free and nobody was ringing anything in. And now you're just realizing that this is a problem? Together, how much are you both in debt? I don't know exactly. Over 200,000? Probably. Wow, that's not good when you're in debt and you don't even know how much you're in debt by. So this is do or die for you. This is. You guys are waking up with a failed business and you're not doing anything different. Yeah, you could just walk around the neighborhood Look at what the other bars are doing and why those bars are getting packed. Because this is like prime real estate. You're by the beach. You have a decent sized bar with outdoor seating. This place has the right bones to be making a lot of money. Last night I slammed this place, right? They got so busy that they said and stopped ringing stuff up and gave the whole bar away. Put your hands up! I don't understand this logic at all. 
why would this be your instinct to just give away free drinks when you get overwhelmed? Like, don't you want to make money? Yeah, there's two bartenders. It shouldn't have been that hard to take care of a crowd that size. You took a bottle, you poured it out all over the bar. How much did you ring up from it? It's probably only six shots. <sighs> she poured away two bottles of Patron and she only rang for six shots. The fact that she rang in some drinks shows that she could have rang in every single drink. There's no excuse for giving away free drinks because you got overwhelmed. She gave away $2,000 worth of drinks last night. That's about the number. $2,000 she gave away in this short little service. Remember, they closed the bar early because of all the mold and all the improperly stored food. Giving away $2,000 a night for an entire shift is bad. That's nuts. We didn't know what was going me. on last night, who was collecting what, how we were doing it. None of the tabs got paid for. So I brought customers in everything. the building. That's bull****, and you know it. You're focusing on me being a thief, and I'm not. How do you not know how to ring things in? Ringing in 60 to 100 people is no different than ringing in one person. And she rang in some of the drinks. Just ring in every single drink. Like, why is this even an argument? Why'd you do something like that? You guys know what I've been through this year. Are you kidding me? I'm not gonna do this. Either tell her to stay and give her the conditions or tell her to leave, but be commanding. Yeah, if you show up by $15, you can get written up for that. But she just intentionally gave away $2,000. And you're seriously considering keeping her? I've got about 100, 120 people out there. I'm gonna let them all in at once. I'm gonna slam you on purpose. Welcome to Two Cans. Come on in. Let's have a good time. I mean, they had a heads up on the first night with all those people coming in at once. You know, that was only last night, but hopefully they learned something out of it. So this could be thought of as their second stress test. Are you gonna try our zombie drink, Caparismia? I want that zombie drink, make me a zombie drink. Aaron, that's your side of the bar. Let's go, girl. Jamie, they put the oranges in the walk-in. The what? Oranges? I couldn't find any. Okay. No oranges? That's on your signature drink right now, the zombie. You need the oranges for the garnish, and they don't have any. Did they like not learn anything from the night before? They didn't prepare for this? John and Jamie don't communicate with each other. They don't function as a partner. You got everything right here. Can John come and help do this? John, John, John. <sighs> Man, why is it <laughs> whenever these people buckle under these stress tests, the first instincts to go behind the bar, right? There's only two wells. It's not, there's no space to make more drinks. But well, you're not a bartender. As the owner, you gotta pay attention to what's going on on the floor. We're talking about busing, dirty glasses and dirty dishes, and also running the food. <laughs> Let the bartenders do their own work. You're just getting in the way by being behind the bar. Let's go guys, hustle, hustle, hustle. These tickets are gonna just keep firing. I need a runner. Here we go. I got two. Wait, that cat. I know those rat traps and mouse traps, but you have a mouse walking around in the middle of service. Make it look perfect if you want people coming back. What the? F I got f rats running under my f feet right now. Jump. Oh my god, they're running around the kitchen in public view. And the bar's crowded with customers right now. That's how you know it's bad when the pests are not even afraid of the people anymore. Do you understand what corporate yeah. responsibility yeah. is? Yes. Yeah. Do you understand yeah. what it is to own a freaking business yeah. and you're feeding people? Oh my god. What do you say, Nick? Rats! Oh my god. How many rats are here? In a tropical location like Florida, rats are a fact. They live in walls. They live in foundations. Guys, I can't honestly sell food when you're watching a rat run by, Logan. You're very right. Shut Oh my god. So it's not just the hidden cameras that are spotting the rats. They're just openly running around, not even afraid of people because they probably didn't do anything to threaten their existence of living in this building. And the service just started. Had some rodent issues in the kitchen. Why do we have rodent issues in the kitchen? We did a real clean on it, but I guess that what built up over time, now they gotta learn that it's not here anymore. Yeah, rats, they're learning animals. Even if you clean the place, they're probably so used to having scraps and food left over that they're gonna be here for a while until you repeatedly can clean the kitchen so that the rats will learn that this place doesn't have free food anymore. You guys ready to sit? Yes. Yeah. 
Dude, that's so much better. It has like a, <laughs> a little bit of like a pirate theme to it. The sign is way bigger, way taller, grabs the attention. We talked about earlier that there's a lot of competition in this area, so you need to stand out. I closed a pirate barn. Have you always wanted to open a pirate barn? It's sort of the ultimate adult fantasy. Dangerous and sexy. I never thought I would ever do a pirate barn, to be honest with you. That's pretty funny that Honestly, that rescue, I think they could have done the pirate bar a lot better. It was just run like too juvenile. Yeah, it's so funny that he's giving you the pirate theme bar another chance. You guys want to see it? Yeah! Oh, yeah. Holy yeah. crap! <laughs> Wow, this is like a really impressive rescue. This is what the Pirates Tavern should have been like. Want you to have great cocktails, so we got your great signature glass. <laughs> you can't get. That's cool. I guess you got to work around the laws around having glass by the beach. It's funny that John figured out a way to make the plastic glassware look a lot more fancier. People who come in, they all love it. Think it's awesome. Cleaner, organized. The Bonnie Ray booty. I've already seen a few people come back. Give me five seconds. Yeah, that's great when you have people come back. That's probably the most important thing about the success of a bar or restaurant. It's not the first impression, but for them to come back, that's even more important. What changed between me and John is we've become a lot closer. We're working together now instead of working against each other. Without me and Jamie going at it, it, it everything's a lot easier. That's so important, like we discussed. I honestly never heard of any place that can survive if the owners can't get along. And now that they are getting along, they look a lot happier. They don't even look like the same people that we saw in the beginning of the episode. Hey, if you enjoyed that, don't forget to check out these other videos as well. And please leave on the comment section on what videos I should react to next. And if you haven't done so already, don't forget to like and subscribe. And I'll see you guys on the next one.